lift our hands to the heavens and give God praise. Oh, Lord, we bless you. We give you glory and praise. With the fruit of our leaves, Father, we bless you. You are indeed good and marvelous. We worship you, Jesus. We exalt your name. We praise you. Oh, Ratabalaba Koshada Bahaya. Oh,
Let somebody shout hallelujah. Kindly let us pray. Jehovah Rapha is the Lord. Jehovah Rapha is the Lord. Jehovah Rapha is the Lord. Is the Lord that he let me. Hallelujah. Jehovah Rapha is the Lord. Jehovah Rapha is the Lord. Jehovah Rapha is the Lord, is the Lord that he let me. Hallelujah. Jehovah Rapha is the Lord. Jehovah Rapha is the Lord. Jehovah Rapha is the Lord, is the Lord that he let me. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Rebekah, the Elo in God, the everlasting Father, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the unchangeable changer, the one who was, the one who is, the one that is coming again, the God of all flesh, whom there is nothing too difficult for. We want to thank you. We want to acknowledge your majesty, 
we want to acknowledge your supremacy. And we are acknowledging your mercy as well, because you are rich in mercy, plenteous in mercy. Thank you for your mercy for our lives. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We want to thank you especially for what you have been doing in our life and all this program in the past and what you are about to do now. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We thank you over the life of your son, our daddy, our father and the Lord, and the entire family. Thank you for keeping them. Thank you for preserving them. Thank you for the way and manner you have been using them and strengthening them. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Today we are here again, Lord Almighty. We bring everything to you. You that can heal. You that can deliver. You that can save. You that can make whole. Whatever ailment, whatever sickness, whatever disease, whatever problem anyone might have brought in here today, Father, I pray they will not go with them in Jesus' name. By your strength, you will heal today in Jesus' name. You will deliver and you will set free. And at the end of it all, you will take all the glory. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give God the glory for yet another opportunity to be at the faith clinic today. And we thank our daddy and the Lord, our father and the Lord especially, for this great privilege that you have extended to us to be in this platform. And I want to appreciate the choir for their rendition and also the tireless effort of the dope crew to make this program to continue. God will bless you all in Jesus' name. Today's topic for our faith clinic is the God of all flesh can heal all flesh. And our text is taken from Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh, is there anything too hard for me? God asks a question, and you need to answer that question today. Is your own too difficult for God? As for me, mine is not difficult for God. Is anything so impossible for God to do? As for me, nothing is impossible for God to do. It's the God of all flesh. You know, the maker of every product has a mastery over his products. If anything wrong for such products, he knows what to do. He knows the one to repair. He knows the one to replace. And more <laughs> than that, he even has a pile of stock, uh, spare parts in warehouse that he can use to replace every part that cannot be replaced. The same thing applicable. God said to you and I, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult for me? The one who created us in his own image, satisfy all good, is the manufacturer of our system, of our organ. He knows every part of our organ. And if there's anything wrong there, he has ability to put them right. So I want you to believe and put your faith on this, that the God of all flesh is able to heal all flesh. You know, when a man is sick and he goes to another man for healing, all they could do is to heal one part of the sickness. They can heal the body, but when he becomes spiritual, when it's something of soul, when it's something of the spirit, there's nothing any man can do. But when somebody goes to God for healing, he will not only heal the body, he will heal the spirit, the soul, and the body. So 
God is the one who can make one's whole. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 23 to 24. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 to 24. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Our soul, our spirit, and our body can only be healed by the God of all flesh. That's why he said in 3 John 2, 3 John 2, he said, Behold, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Today, God will heal your soul, we heal your spirit, and we heal your body in Jesus' name. You know, we can categorize sickness, disease, and problem into three major categories. When Jesus Christ was speaking to the people in Matthew 19, verse 12, Matthew 19, 12, he made an illustration that there are three kinds of eunuchs. Those that were born from their mother's womb as eunuch, and those men made eunuch, and those who made themselves eunuch for the sake of the kingdom of God. The same thing applicable to sickness, disease, and problem of life. There are some problems that we are born with. There are some problems that men, situation, and circumstances brought to our lives. And they are the one we brought to ourselves. Whatever your situation may be today, the God of all flesh will heal you in Jesus' name. So we're going to quickly consider those three major categories before we pray. Number one, when we talk about sickness, disease, and problems we are born with, we look at the sample of in John chapter 9, 1 to 7. John 9, 1 to 7. This man was born blind from childhood. I mean, from the womb, he came out blind, no socket at all, and he grew in that problem. So he was in darkness right from the womb till the time he was brought forth. There is no medication. No matter how brilliant a doctor may be, he cannot do that. He could not solve that problem because he's born with that problem. But the one who is the God of all flesh, who knows what to do, made a socket where the eye is supposed to be, molded the clay, put the eye there, and the next thing, he regained his sight. Have you lost your spiritual vision? Are you spiritually blind? Today, God will open your spiritual eyes in Jesus' name. We also have another case in Acts of Apostles chapter 3, when you begin to read from 1 to 7, Acts 3, 1 to 7, of a man who was born lame, right from his mother's womb. Not his own fault, was born lame from his, mother, uh, his mother's womb. And he had been stand, sitting beside the gate of, I mean, beautiful gate. Until Peter and John were passing. Maybe they had been passing there, elfin and often, but that day was his own day. Tonight is your own night too. What nobody can do in your life, God will do it today in Jesus' name. As soon as they saw him, he was looking for arms, but the one who can heal all flesh turned to his favor on that day. And they, they said, silver and gold we have known, but such as we have we give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man who has never walked in his life, the Bible says he started leaping, walking, and before you know it, he began to jump. What are we saying? We have some sickness and diseases that are genetic in nature, and they are called either seasonally or they become generational. <laughs> I can, I'm not a medical uh, practitioner, so I don't know more, but some cases of hypertension, diabetic, uh, sickle cell, and the mere, 
they could be genetic in nature. And when this happens, more often than not, nothing can anybody do. I remember a case when I was in, in the far north. We wanted to rent a cinema house to start a parish. And then we asked for the landlord. They brought him, and he was deaf and dumb. We have to use sign. And then I said, OK, if he cannot talk, call any of the children. Three or four children that we saw, because it's a long time ago, they were all deaf and dumb. Ha! Then we have question, how come father, all the children, they say even the grandfather before he died was in similar situation. Is your case similar to what we are talking about tonight? Were you born into the problem you are carrying? Were you born into the disease that is in your system? I want to assure you tonight, the God of all flesh can heal all flesh. And it will solve your problem today in Jesus' name. So I'm going to pray and say, Father, you know the beginning from the end. Fix the foundation of my sickness and let there be an end in Jesus' name. Father, you know the beginning from the end. Fix the foundation of my sickness and let there be an end to it today in Jesus' name. Father, you know the foundation of all things. Because you are the Alpha and Omega, please fix the foundation of my sickness, of my problem today, and let there be an end to it in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, every generational mark that is affecting my healing, let your blood cancel them today in Jesus' name. Father, every generational mark that is affecting my healing, let your blood cancel such today in Jesus' name. Every generational mark that is affecting my healing, let your blood cancel them right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to move to those men, those that men made Unok, like we said. That means those who were sick as a result of situation, circumstances, or they find themselves able before, and now they are disabled, job by circumstances. In 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4, 2 Samuel 4, 4, I will read. And Jonathan saw son, had a son that was lame of his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his son took him up and fled. And it came to pass, as he made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mishibosheth. He is a boy, a prince. For that matter, born in the palace, born as able-bodied uh, uh, child, and for the first five years of his life, he did not know anything called disability. But when they brought the news of the dead of his uh, father and grandfather, and the maid took him by the, um, I mean, climbed on his back, on her back, and was running away. In the process of running, Mesibosheth fell and the leg became paralyzed. The one who did not know sickness, I mean disability before, now became disabled. From comfort to discomfort. I mean, we have such situation in lives. Some as a result of missiles, some as a result of virus, some, I mean, by infection one way or the other, they suffer disability. And there are some is as a result of accident. When they involve in an accident, at least we thank God that life is safe. But yet, maybe one part of the body is already gone or not functioning at all. Some also were born into comfort, like Meshibosheth. This one was born into comfort, but when he lost the father and grandfather, her poverty set in, discomfort set in. Maybe you two have been affluent before, but as a result of maybe bad association or you form partnership in business with people who are insincere, unfaithful, I mean, 
and they ditch you. Now from wet, you will now become poor. Today, God will heal you. He will heal your body. We will heal your finances in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray? Say, Father, for every affliction that men or circumstances have placed upon me, by your stripe, heal me now in Jesus' name. Father, for every affliction that men or circumstances have placed on me, Father, heal me now in the name of Jesus. For every affliction that men or circumstances have placed on me, Father, by your stripe, heal me today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, Father, every human error in my life, let your blood correct them now in the name of Jesus. Every human error in my life, in my organ, please let your word, your power, and your name correct them now in Jesus' name. Father, every error, human error in my life, let your word and your power correct them now in the name of Jesus. Correct them by your blood in the name of Jesus. Amen. The top categories are those sickness, disease, affliction, and problem that we brought to ourselves. The first example is in 2 Samuel chapter 6, 20 to 23. 2 Samuel 6, 20 to 23. We have the story of Micah, who happened to be the wife of David and a daughter and was a daughter of Saul, a daughter of Saul the king. David was rejoicing in the presence of God, in the presence of all the congregation, dancing and praising God from the bottom of his heart. You know, David happened to be a worshiper. So with that joy, he came to his household and was dancing among the male servants, the male servants, all those people around his household, he was dancing in their presence, rejoicing, thanking God, appreciating God. And Micah said, what the, what the hell? What kind of nonsense are you doing? You a whole king, almost uncovered, dancing between, in the midst of the servant. And David said, it's God who has appointed me to be whom I am, that I'm glorifying and appreciating. Do you know David did not cause her? But the Bible account said he remained, she remained barren throughout her life. If you look at the Bible, at least she be the only woman that was ever remained barren throughout her lifetime in the scripture. Why? Because he did not honor God in the life of David. Instead of honoring, honoring God, he mocked the king and mocked his God. And David did not cause her, but God, who is a jealous God, disciplined her and she remained barren. Another case study is found in Esther chapter 1, 16 to 17. Esther 1, 16 to 17. Of a queen called Fasti. This queen was loved by the husband. The husband loved her. The husband also admired her beauty. And he was proud of the beauty of, this, of, of his queen. One day at a party he was making in his palace, he was so joyful and said, please, call my wife the queen. Let her come and honor her the guests and let me appreciate her and her beauty in the presence of all. But he did, he, she disrespected the husband. I pity women who disrespect their husband, despise their husband, humiliate their husband, and then they begin to respect other outside. If you don't respect your head, and you are respecting other head, or you don't follow after your head, you are following after another person's head, you can cause problems for your life. That's what happened to fasting. And uh, before you know it, a judgment was passed that it should be removed from a position 
as a queen. And he had fatal judgment again that she was killed. Number one, your husband is your glory. When your husband is removed, your glory is removed. So I want to appeal to all women, please respect your husband, honor them, and obey them so that the God of all flesh will heal all your amen today in Jesus' name. We also have another example of those who brought problem and sickness to their life. His name is called Gaius, 2 King chapter 5, 25 to 27. 2 King 5, 25 to 27. And that man came to the man of God with silver, with gold, and all change of garments. But Elisha did not even meet him one on one. He just said, go to Jordan and bath seven times and you'll be, you'll be well. That's what Naaman did eventually. And he was going back to his own country. And Gia said, ah, my master left all this evil and gold and exchange of raiment. I will follow after. You know, some children of God and some men of God today and women of God too, they have mortgaged their soul because of money, because of greediness for power. They mortgage their soul, mortgage the life of their family. So, <laughs> they just run after Nama. Got the money he wanted, got the exchange of raiment he wanted, and the fact is that when you commit one sin, and people wanted to nip you for that sin, you look. You commit another sin to cover up. As soon as he came, the master said, where have you been? And he said, I, I went nowhere. I was just in your place. And, uh, the master said, my eyes were following you. When you followed that man and collected silver and collected raiment, he said, is it this time? Is it the time for raiment? Is it the time? Some people, because of inordinate ambition, they, 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 they brought problem to their life and truncate their, their, their destiny. Your destiny. Your destiny will not be truncated in Jesus' name. So when <laughs> he said, he now made a pronouncement. You are, since you have collected the prop, property of the one who was leprous before, let the leprosy of that man come over you. So Gaius became the father of leper and generation of leper. Whatever your action, your greediness, your inordinate ambition, whatever problem you have brought to your life, the God of all flesh, as you are hearing now, will hear you in Jesus' name. Maybe somebody was struggling for this, struggling for that, and in the process, there will be hypertension, there will be diabetics. If you are in that situation today, as you are listening, God of all flesh will hear you. Before I get out of this problem that we brought for ourselves, I will give another case study or two. That is of Jonah. In Jonah 1, 2 to 3. Jonah 1, 2 to 3. God commanded Jonah. Jonah was a child of God, a man of God, that was working with God. And God said, go to Nineveh. I sent him a message. And uh, he substituted to the message to another one. He went to Tarsus instead of Nineveh. Don't substitute your way to the will of God. Stand by the will of God. That is what will be profitable to you and I. So he went to Tarsus to call the story short. He found himself in the belly of whale for three days and three nights until mercy spoke for him when he called on God and permitted him. What led Jonah to the belly of wave? It's disobedience. Many children of God, many of us, we are walking in disobedience. Obedience, Bible compare disobedience, Bible compare it to the sin of witchcraft. So many people disobedient to God's instruction disobedience to authority, 
even the disobedience to revelation God gave to them. And that's why he found himself in the belly of way. Are you in the belly of way today? Where you don't even know where you are in daytime or darkness? Why every situation remains the same for you? You are not going forward, you are not coming backward. You are just rotating in a circle. If you can remove that disobedience and confess today, God who deliver Jonah will deliver you as well. In Jesus' name. So we're going to pray right now and say, Father, let your mercy locate me and heal me in every area I've gone wrong in Jesus' name. Father, let your mercy locate me and heal me from any area that I've gone wrong in Jesus' name. Father, let your mercy locate me and heal me from every area that I've gone wrong in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, even the lawful captive can be delivered. Therefore, deliver me from the hands of the mighty and wicked tonight in Jesus' name. Father, even the lawful captives can be delivered. Tonight, deliver me from the hand of the mighty and the wicked in the name of Jesus. Even the lawful captives can be delivered. Deliver me tonight from the hands of the mighty and from the hands of the wicked in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray again and say, Father, every open edge through which affliction has come into my life, let it be shut permanently today in Jesus' name. Father, every open edge in which affliction has come to my life, let it be shut permanently today in Jesus' name. Father, every open edge in which affliction has come into my life, let it be permanently shut today in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'll be so in Jesus' name. And what are we to do? For God to right the wrong and make things beautiful again. What are we to do? For God of all flesh to heal our flesh, to heal us bodily, to heal us spiritually, and to heal our soul as well. Number one, we need to cast our body upon him and be open. Don't let us be that, like that Samaritan woman. In John chapter 4, we begin to read from 1 to the end. She came to Jesus Christ. And of course, the exchange conversation gave me water. I will, I will not give you water. Eventually, Jesus said to her, go and call me your husband. Instead of open up that I've brought problems to my marital life due to my lost, lust, due to my fornication and adultery, I have no place I can call my own now. I have been going from one husband to the other. <laughs> he said, I have no husband. <laughs> she covered up. So many of us, we are just putting in all good suit. Good uh, barbariga, big egg tie, designer suit, but fire is burning inside. Instead of open to God of all flesh, who can quench that fire? We still use uh, charisma and all the rest to cover up, laughing and suffering. Jesus said, Let me tell you, you have five husbands, and the one you are staying with is even not your husband. Ah, he said, are you a prophet? But thank God for his mercy. The mercy of God pleaded for her, and that is was the end of her marital woe. We never read in the Bible again. We never read in anywhere that she was again going from one husband to the other. So open up, cast your body upon him. Because 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 says, 1 Peter 5 7 says, Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. God cares for you, he cares for me. Let's cast that body upon him. Number two, don't be afraid, but believe him. Don't be afraid. Like what daddy told us, all his children this year, 2021, he said, we should not be careless, but we should not be afraid. This happened in Luke chapter 8, 49 to 50. Luke 8, 49 to 50. 
a ruler of synagogue called Jairus came to Jesus Christ and was telling Jesus, come and heal my daughter. She's seriously, she was seriously sick. And Jesus was about going when another woman of issue of blood touched his garment. And by the time they were settling that, another messenger came from ruler of synagogue, Jairus' house, and said, why are you bothering the master again? The case is hopeless. Your daughter is already dead. Remember the topic. The God of all flesh can heal all flesh. Even when it is dead, he can bring it back to life. And Jesus said, don't worry. When Jesus, he said, fear not. Believe only and she shall be made whole. Fear not. Believe only and she shall be made whole. I'm encouraging you tonight also, don't be afraid. Only believe God as God. He has not failed before. He cannot fail and he will not fail. Whatever your situation is, even when doctors say it's a terminal disease, you still have hope. The God of all flesh can heal all flesh and he will heal you today. Even when he got back to the Jairus house, Truly, the daughter was dead, but death was not a barrier because Jesus rose that daughter up and gave it to the mother and said, go and give, them, give her food to eat. Whatever is dead in your life, we come back to life today in Jesus' name. Number three, don't put your trust in man. Don't put your trust in man. Jeremiah 17, 5. Jeremiah 17, 5. Don't say the Lord. God be the man that trusted in man and make a flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. Don't put your trust in man. I know doctors are trying, they are doing their best, they are, and they are experts, and God is using them mightily. But some have made doctors their God. The moment doctor says, this is it, they believe that's the final report. In fact, some will die because of doctor report, than the ailment in their body. Eh? I discover when, when I want to uh, check my high blood pressure, each time I want to say, please help me check it. Even before the result comes, one mind will be saying, ah, Abby is not going to be okay today. <laughs> today. And at the, at the end of the day, they say it's okay. But let me tell you, what they say is okay now, in the next minute or two, when you do serious job, he can get out from the level that he wants to another. Why must we trust man instead of trusting God? So don't put your trust in man. Put your trust in God. Because Psalm 9 verse 10, Psalm 9 verse 10 say, And they that know their name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. God will not forsake you. If you put your trust in him, he will not disappoint you if only you can put your trust in him. The God of all flesh can heal all flesh. And I want you to know that healing are for children. In Matthew 15, 26, Matthew 15, 26, a woman came to Jesus and Jesus answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. If one God to feed you with the bread of healing today, you must surrender to Jesus Christ. You must be part of his family. You must give your totality to him. And it is then he will heal your sickness, will heal your diseases, and solve all your problems. In conclusion, Joseph is a typical example we have that comprises all what we are saying, whether born with it, whether men afflicted you, or you brought it to yourself. Number one, if you read the story of Joseph very well, naturally, he was born as a dreamer. But he was born into the midst of siblings that are envious and vindictive. So, 
It is the sibling that brought the problem to his life. If you remember the story, they are the one who first put him into the pit. Thank God there was no water there. And they are the one who also sold him into servanthood and slavery. So he was born into a, a family where all the siblings are envious and vindictive. Number two, men brought problems to the life of Joseph. Why? In Genesis 39, 19 to 20, Genesis 39, 19 to 20, they lie against him. They said they committed a sin that, um, uh, that they did not commit. And they sentenced him into a prison without time, a prison without case file, a prison without a uh, period that we get out. But God was with him. God will be with you in Jesus' name. So that is what men brought to his life. And finally, he brought affliction to himself also. If you read Genesis 37 verse 2, Genesis 37 verse 2, he is the one who always will not close his eye and close his mouth. Anything that the sibling did, he will come back to the father and tell them. He, he was always reporting the fault of the ch other children to the father. So he too <laughs> brought a problem to himself. But where I'm going is this. Whether he brought that problem to himself, he was born into it, and men brought it to him, God of all flesh took charge, and he delivered Joseph. He became a prime minister even in the land of Egypt. Beloved, do you have the spirit of God in you? If your answer is no, and you want God of all flesh to heal you tonight, I encourage you to surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ so that the spirit can begin to dwell in you. And it will heal you too and solve all your problems in Jesus' name. We're going to pray. We're going to pray and say, Father, have mercy on me and heal my spirit, soul, and body in Jesus' name. Say, Father, have mercy on me and heal my body, spirit, and soul in Jesus' name. Father, have mercy on me. Heal me. Give me all and wholeness in the name of Jesus. And God will do that for you in Jesus' name. If you have time, we pray one or two prayer more. But before then, if you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to surrender to him so that you become one of the children who will be fed with the bread of the healing. Because Jesus Christ himself, the healer, he said healing are the bread of the children. Do you want to become one? You can just say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know I'm a sinner, but you can forgive me because your blood cleanses us from all sin. I believe you are my Savior. I accept you as my Lord and Savior today. Let your blood wash away my sin, and I'll begin to serve you forever. Help me, O oh Lord. If you have said this with me, please bow down your heads so that we can pray. Father, as many have, decide, have decided to give their life to you, to confess their sin before you right now, please save their soul in Jesus' name. Let your blood wash away their sin in Jesus' name. Give them power to serve you to the end in Jesus' name. And every problem in their life, let it be solved right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. If you have uh, one of those who prayed this prayer, you will see some details, phone numbers on the screen. You can write your name, your address, and your phone number, and text them or WhatsApp them to that phone numbers. Your information will read the death of our daddy, our father, and the Lord, and we'll be praying for you. But perhaps you are very close to any Redeemed Christian Church of God church or parish. Just go there and tell the pastor that, that, that you heard the word of God and we want daddy to pray for you continually. Give those details to the pastor there. He will send it to daddy and father and the Lord. He will pray for you on daily basis and you'll be receiving miracle. The rest of all, we are going to pray one or two prayer more and then we, we close. Say, Father, you are the God of all flesh. 
any organ in my body not functioning well, give me brand new one in Jesus' name. Father, you are God of all flesh. Any organ in my body that is not functioning well, give me a brand new one today in Jesus' name. Father, you are the God of all flesh. Any organ in my body that is not functioning well, Father, give me a brand new one today in Jesus' name. We're going to pray and say, Father, please don't let me be ever sick again in Jesus' name. Father, give me divine health. Don't let me be ever sick again in Jesus' name. Father, don't let me be ever sick again in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. We're going to pray right now, and I want you to connect with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to assure you that our Father and the Lord is praying for all of us in this program. And I want you to concentrate on Christ, the healer, is the God of all flesh, and the sufferer of all problems. Whatever problem you have brought, just be talking to him and say a loud, I mean, be saying a resounding amen, even as we pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we want to thank you because you are the creator of heaven and earth. You are the one who created us in your own image. And you sanctify us good. And if there is anything not good in our life, in our organ, spiritually, physically, and bodily, because you are the God of all flesh, you can write them. Therefore, we call upon your name today. By your slide, let every one of us Receive healing now in the name of Jesus. You have said healing at the bread of the children. And we are your children, God of all flesh. Feed us with the bread of healing now in the name of Jesus. Every problem we are brought in here today, we decree by your name, we shall see them no more in Jesus' name. Spiritually heal us in Jesus' name. Physically heal us in Jesus' name. Maritally, heal us in Jesus' name. Ministerially, heal us in Jesus' name. Financially, heal us in Jesus' name. In every area of our lives that we have been looking for healing, that we have been looking for, 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 for solution, you are God of all flesh. Give us testimony tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. It is now time to give our offering and give your best so you can receive the best from God and also to make your healing permanent. So if you have not packaged your offering, begin to package it right now. And as well, you will see various banks on the, on the screen. Follow the instruction they are giving there so that it can enable you to pay online and uh, God will bless you as you do so. Those of us who are packaged our offering, please kindly lift it up as we pray. Father Almighty, we bless your holy name. We thank you for giving us something which we can give back to you. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. You are the God of all flesh that nothing is too difficult for. Even in the difficult economy of our nation, you will bless us in the name of Jesus. You will heal our finances in the name of Jesus. And we will live in abundance in the name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Father. We add that this offering, you lay your mighty hand on it, sanctify it, and use it for your glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.